Here we go. We're live on Facebook. This is part two. If you missed part one, it's on YouTube on our channel. And we're going to be calling live this time. Kent, you're going to go first just because I suck and you don't, okay? <laughs> Fair enough. All right, good, Fair good. Enough. All right, so there are two things we're going to be doing. We're going to be going over the process of talking to these types of leads where it's expired or for sale by owner. And we'll show you some of the scripts that we use. And then Curtis is going to send them out to everybody that registered. And if you're on the Facebook side of this, uh, I'm sure you can message us and then I'll send you over to Curtis so you guys can get a copy of that too. And then we're also going to be going into actually calling so you can kind of see how it works live and how we think on our feet, right? So you get exposed to that process as well. Because we may tell you to do one thing, but then when something comes across live, we handle it a little bit differently because we've been doing it for so long. So you can see how it is from one seeing it, reading it versus how we're actually saying it live. All right, does that does that work for you guys? Works for me. All Sounds right. Great. So let's Kent, let's go really quick on the idea behind calling, just just so we can give some time for people on the Facebook side to to jump on. And the idea behind calling is, of course, to set an appointment. Right. That's that's the number one thing that you're looking for. But one thing that you mentioned last time is that. You're also trying to build a relationship here. You're not trying to just shoo them off and leave a bad taste in your mouth either, right? So can you explain yeah. the philosophy behind that? Yeah, definitely. I, I think that, I mean, 70% of lead are of commissions checks or um, really just closings come from the follow-up. So first call, typically you're not going to get a whole lot of traction it's going to be the calls afterwards. I mean, they're going to, and that could be because they're testing you could be because they're, you're just a complete stranger and they don't have that trust in you yet. So really that third, fourth, fifth, sixth call is where you're going to start. To see, I would say seven calls minimum. If you're not reaching out to all of your leads, a minimum of seven times, they're probably not real leads. And that's, so it's good to distinguish that. What's a lead in your mind? What's worth following up with? And the reason why a lot of people don't do that follow up is because, and I had to get over this as well, is you get 50 no's. Finally, someone says, yes, you're too scared to call them back and be have them be that 51st no. Because you finally got that yes and that dopamine hit of satisfaction. It makes sense. So tell me, how do you know who to call back? What are the what, what are the things you're looking for? Um, timeline, cooperation, I think is a big thing. So somebody might say, well, we're looking to sell. Yeah, definitely. Perfect. Where are you going to go when you sell? We're going to this place. How soon do you need to be there? Well, we'd like to be there in January. That's probably a good person to follow up with. And usually what I'll say is I, I can totally respect selling in January. If you could sell for seven, seven and a half percent more now, which is what we're seeing rather than waiting until January, wouldn't you want to at least know more about it? Yeah, definitely. So then tell me, Kent, if I come across somebody and let's say I'm talking to Curtis and Curtis is like, no, you know, just, I'm not interested right now. I'm not just, don't, please don't call me again. What happens then? Do you call again later? What does that look like? And how do you know to call them back if they're saying no? Uh, depends on what, what lead type they are. If it's, if I'm circle prospecting, I typically won't call them back just because it's a waste of time. If they're an expired, I'll call them back the next day. Because what happens is, is 50 other people are calling, but maybe that, maybe one of those people kicked up curiosity in their mind and put it in a different perspective where they're like, hmm, actually I do want to sell. And you're that lucky caller afterwards that they set an appointment with. They don't remember who the heck they talked to. They've already been talking to way too many people. That's true. That's very true. 
All right, so anything you want to let us know before you make a, a couple of calls here? Any, anything you want to set the premise or tone on before we, we listen to you talk? It may take a few times before you jump in, but you know, anything? Um, no, I, I think the biggest thing is I don't do anything special. <laughs> and, and a lot of people are going to see that. If, if, you're, if you're here to be shocked and awed, you, you won't get that. It's just, I mean, it's as simple as following a script, asking the right questions and, and persisting. I, one of my favorite quotes is the reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable one persists in adapting the world to himself. Dude, I, ju I literally just read that in the book originals. That is so funny. It was at the very beginning. Yep. That is, that's a really good quote. Good quote. Good job on that one. That's very true. So it's, I, I, you just have to be unreasonable. This is your, this is your job. You can't let someone hinder you from doing your job. But, right. but can't you, you say you're not going to do anything special. And, and, and I agree. We do a lot of live prospecting over here at Red X and we, we, you know, we've broadcasted that quite a bit and people go, Oh, I, that it, yeah, that didn't seem like it was anything special, but you're going to do, you're on pace to do 52 transactions this year in your second full-time year of real estate. Yeah. And I, I think that is pretty special. Uh, so what is special is the persistence and consistency that you've prospected. I, I think a lot of people see this and um, you're going to call for how, I don't know how long we're going to call, but you're going to get, you're likely to get some no's. You're likely to get a whole bunch of people that won't answer the phone. Yeah. You know, so, so how 52 transactions and the consistency, how many hours a day are you prospecting to be able to do that? And then any advice on, on that? Cause we see a lot of people who, who are like, Oh, I could do that. I'm going to do that. And they call and they go, man, that, that kind of sucked for two hours and I didn't get anything. I'm not going to, I'm done. I'm going to go buy Facebook ads. <laughs> that's, that's so funny that's very funny but dude if you sucked at calling these people you're gonna suck at calling facebook leads too so true yeah that's right you're not you're gonna like it a lot less truthfully <laughs> so i think i think that whole mindset of dang this sucks are, are you talking about rejection curtis or yeah i think so that? so i look at rejection as money and you have to so you, you kind of have to look at it as a basketball player, the more points they score, the more they're going to get paid. But in order to score those points, they got to shoot a lot of shots. <laughs> so the more shots you take, the luckier you, the luckier you get, the more money you get paid. Yeah. And it's Very just all knowing your stats. Very true. All right, Kent, let's, uh, let's do this. You're going to go first until you get somebody and then uh, Curtis, I'm going to call. Uh, oh, we'll get into that after. Okay. Uh, Kent, you go first. And one thing that you said, so everybody pays attention, it's it's nothing that's going to be crazy. It's simple. He follows a script. All right. So don't expect to be, <laughs> watch Kent do something that you've never heard. <laughs> it's just regular. And the point is he's very consistent at it. So he does a great job with his tonality approach and he's aware so Kent, it's up to you, buddy. Get going. You're gonna Keep call. Here. You're gonna call Geo Leads, a neighborhood yeah, prospecting. So what are you gonna call? The last time we spoke, I said a lot of times I'll call properties that sold for above value in a short period of time, even if I didn't sell them. So that's what I'm going to do today. Calling what around those properties. Call around those properties. Yeah. And, and typically I'll have buyer's interest. I mean, we work with, even at our office, we work with a ton of buyers. So if we have a buyer interested in an area, I'm absolutely calling, which this is what that is. So it's kind of like circle prospecting. Is that what it would be? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. And I've got, I've got a script for that on my script book. So Curtis will share that with you after. Hello. Hello, good morning. I'm looking, or good afternoon. I'm looking to speak with Mrs. Robinson. Wrong number. Wrong number. My apologies. Maybe you could help me out. Did you ever by chance used to live on Little Willow Cove in Mapleton? Yes. You did. Okay. So do you happen to know the owners there now? 
and have their contact information. Uh, and before I before I get into that, my name is Kent Brown. I'm with Summit Realty. We just have buyers interested in the area. Um, no, I just rented there. I don't know. It's um, been a long time. Okay. No, I see. Perfect. Have you already bought in your next house? Or are you still looking? No. You're still renting. Well, when that time yeah, does- I'm not in a position for buying right now. You're not? Well, is this a good number to text you on? I'd love to send you some information about myself for when you are looking to buy. I'd love to be a resource for you. Um, I'm good. I don't think so. I have a lot of people who could help me out, but thanks. You do? Okay. Well, thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye now. You still dialing? No, let's pause. Okay, cool. All right, dude, that was that was really good. I love your your approach. It was easy, not forceful. Your tonality was so soft, and it's like even if I didn't want to continue to talk to you, I would still be like I would be polite to you. I'd be like, you know, feel like kicking I'm, a puppy. I'm not in. I'm not exactly. I'd be like it could be like kicking a puppy. It's so good. <laughs> Don't kick the puppy. That's a new shirt. <laughs> uh, oh, it's so good. That's I I did, that. good job, I Ken. Think what, I think what else is amazing is um, look, data. Data is an interesting beast to tackle, and it, whether you use Red X or or any of our competitors, or or whether you've looked up the information on your own, you know, the, the information you're going to get wrong numbers, or you're going to get a tenant like that one was I hey, used to rent there. But every every contact, do you count that as a contact? Yeah, because because you 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 essentially pitched her on sending resources. So there's two things that I thought were amazing. One was it turned a, a wrong number into an opportunity, and two, you went for permission to text. Mm -hmm. and, and nine times out of ten, they say yes. Yeah, and if you have permission to text, then. You know, now, now they're going to absolutely open and and listen to your conversations, and you're compliant. You're not. You're not. There's no risk at that point because they've given you permission. And yeah. and just just so people know, if they're using the dialer inside Red X, um, any time in the call, you can hit a button and it will save the recording of the entire call. So now you also have the recording of that call where she, where she gave permission to send text messages. I love that. Um, yeah. I love that. All right. So Kent, you want to continue maybe two more? Let's do it. All right. I'm going to mute myself. I'm used to saying good morning. Not good afternoon. I know, we threw you <laughs> off. You using a double dialer, single dialer, triple dialer? S single. <laughs> Hi, Bush. Hi, good afternoon. I'm looking to speak with Margie Dobson. Do I have a good number? Hello, can you hear me? Hang up. All right, she hung up. You Let's want to try one it. more time? One more and then we'll switch over to, to me calling. Oh, perfect. Barlow. Hello, Mr. Barlow. This is Kent Brown with Summit Realty. How are you today? I, I'm not understanding what you're saying. Oh, my apology. Is that any better, Mr. Barlow? Yeah, what is it you want? So I'm calling because the I'm calling with a bit of neighborhood news, some really good news. Eric and Leanne Hansen over on Yarrow Drive just sold their home. Problem we're finding is it sold above value in 13 days, which created 
we saw more buyers in the area looking to purchase a home. Was curious if, yeah. Young up. <laughs> let me re let me call him back. We got disconnected. Yeah. Uh, funny thing is, I already called him today. This is Richard at Barlow's Creative Doors. Sorry, I missed you. Leave me a message, and I'll get back. No message. No, I don't leave messages. All right. Cool. Oh, that's right. We went over it last time. Hello, I'm looking to speak with Mrs. Cooper. I am sorry. This is Mike Dubois's phone. Mike Dubois's. You okay. have the wrong number. Did maybe you could help me out okay. here? Did you ever used to live on Crescent Row in Mapleton? Uh, no, we we built some townhomes down there, but we did not live down there. Oh, so you were the original builders of the townhomes. Well, not all of them. Not all of them. Okay. There were a few. Perfect. Did you have a question about something? We don't know any of them anymore. Well, so I was calling. I was calling with actually some neighborhood news. I don't know if you know the Hansons. They lived on Yarrow Drive. Just sold their home. We have quite a few buyers interested in the area. So I was calling a few of the neighbors to see if they might know of anybody looking to sell. Doesn't seem like you can help me out there. But while I have you, though, what plans do you have to buy, sell, or invest this year? Uh, zero. Zero? Any, any loved ones that might be thinking about it? No, I don't think so. No? Okay. Well, while I have you, I, I, I apologize to bother you this afternoon. I'm going to send you out a text message, if it's okay, on this number that just is a little introduction to me. So if you ever do have any questions, I'd be happy to be that referral for you, that resource. I have 706-5279. Yes, uh-huh. Perfect, I'll send that right over. And what was your name? My name is Joanne. Joanne, very nice to meet you, Joanne. Again, my name's Kent Brown with Summit Realty. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye now. Uh-huh, bye-bye. We're good? We're good. All right. I feel like I feel like Disneyland is calling me when I hear your voice. <laughs> like, like the customer service from Disney is like, how can I how can I be upset? How can I <laughs> how can I hang up on you? I can't. <laughs> Dude, that was that was very good and, and one good lesson. So a few good lessons there that people can get towards the end as he did convert her to a possible relationship in the future. He's looking for opportunities, right? He's looking for opportunities to be able to add to his database because he doesn't know if this lady one day will end up referring somebody if he does stay in touch long-term through his systems, processes, and technology. So I love that, Kent, because you always find a way to connect some way, right? Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, everybody's a good resource. I Will I ever follow up with that lady and put her in a drip? or put her in my caller to dial her every other month? No, but I'll send her text messages every once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> dude, and if you add, if you ever add dynamic ads for real estate and you have her cell phone number, chances are she's gonna be on Facebook or Instagram. 70% yep. of the American population is on Facebook. So you're gonna be able to retarget them with your IDX or anything like that. So. My, my goal is to get 2,000 people in that database and do that with them. Because if I get 2,000 people, the likelihood of me getting 50, 60 deals from pass it, from doing nothing is pretty high. That's very true. Very true. All right. So let's, um, Curtis, there's a special number. I'm not going to give it out. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a cool thing I wanted to share, share with you. Kent was calling real people using Red X, right? And I'm going to be calling something that's a little bit different. Uh, I'm cheating. Kent got the hard part. I got the super easy one. And so Curtis over at Red X and the Red X folks, they've got this amazing tool for, for people that are part of Red X. They're, they call a specific number. And 
you the, go the bat back. phone. It's the bat it's phone, Tristan. The bat, there you go. It's the bat phone. It's black and red. It's black That's on right. our side. It's red on their side. As That's soon right. as, as soon as you call it. Uh, you engage with somebody there that's going to take you through scripting, like if they're real people for expires, for sale by owners, circle prospecting, whatever you want. And so then it's it's like you have a cold calling partner, which is absolutely amazing. And so, Curtis, I just don't know who I'm calling. Do I just call and talk to them and say, hey, I'm going to be circle prospecting? It, it'll walk you through. Just call and and if if you can keep it on speaker, it'll walk people through um, but there's so many people reluctant to call because they, they don't have confidence and, and we recognize that and we, we want to help uh, people succeed in calling. So this is a great way to practice. We have some customers that call into this line every day to, to get one practice in before Welcome they get in. Lennox's live prospecting role play system. The first automated role play system in real estate. Your prospecting session will consist of three calls. Please be respectful of the representative's time so other agents will have an opportunity to practice. If you would like another session, you can stay on after the call and you'll be placed back into our queue. What type of lead script would you like to practice today? Press one to practice expired leads. Two to practice for sale by owner leads. Three to practice for rent by owner leads. And four to practice geo leads. I get four. How difficult do you want your role play session to be? Press one for easy, two for medium, or three for hard. Press three. <laughs> Why go easy? I want to learn. That's right. Thank you for calling the Red X role play system. This is Bryson. How can I help you? Hey, Bryson, this is Tristan. I want to test out the circle prospecting or the geo lead scripting. Awesome. Yeah, I heard you You want to have a difficult session. Is that right? Well, you know, don't kill me, but yes. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Well, I can help you out with that. And uh, you said your name's Tristan. Have you role played with us before, Tristan? First time caller. Do I win something? Really? That's awesome. Yeah, you, you win a session with me, free if you want. So I love it. We can help you out for sure. Well, um, before we get started, I have a few questions and some instructions that I'll give you. Is, is that all right? Let's do it. Perfect. Um, first, how long have you been prospecting? Let's just go with this is my first day and see how that goes. Okay. Well, congratulations. And uh, we're super excited to help you out. Um, and are you in any coaching at all, or is this just, you know, kind of on your own? Curtis coaches me. Curtis does. So, you know, Curtis, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, he coaches me too. So we're, we're in the same boat. We better not suck um, then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, uh, what market are you in? Just that way we can make sure to practice in the right area for you. Los Angeles. LA. Perfect. And is there anything specific that you want to work on during this role play call? Any specific objections you've been running into that I can help out with? Uh, that's a great one. No, I just want to keep it open. So whatever you've come across that you think is a, has been a challenge or has been something that people continually say, you can just throw that out. Perfect. Can do, Tristan. And uh, do you have a script ready or do you need me to help you out with that? Oh, you guys also have a script. That's cool. Uh, I have a script, but if I didn't, how would that look if you give me a script? Yeah, so if you log into Vortex, um, you can click on any of our lead types and there's a drop down in our detail view where you can click through any of the scripts that we offer. Um, I can even send you an email with, with a few scripts if that's something you'd want after the call too. That's awesome, man. You know what? I think uh, for now, I'm going to stick with my script, but that's really cool that you guys are able to do that. Awesome. Yeah, no problem. Well, um, we're happy to have you here. So here's what's going to happen. When you're ready to begin, you're going to press star five on your phone. And we're both going to hear two rings and then a phone pickup, and we'll start the session. And I'm going to answer the calls. If I'm the homeowner, you can jump right into your script. Um, you can use 123 Main Street as the address if you want. And you can call me Bryson um, and uh, as the homeowner. And as you're going through the script, I will give you objections. You'll try to overcome them, get 
get back on script, working toward a listing appointment. How's that sound? That sounds pretty good, man. I like that. Perfect. Okay, well then uh, go ahead, press star five when you're ready. Uh, hello? Hi, Bryson? Yeah, that's me. Hey, Bryson, this is Tristan with Keller Williams Realty. How are you? Uh, I'm good. What's up? Awesome, man. Well, that's good. I'm calling because I'm working with some buyers, and they're looking to move to your neighborhood. And I promised my buyers that I'd call around this neighborhood. Do you by any chance know of any neighbors that are friends that are thinking of possibly moving in the next few months? Um, I, I yeah, honestly don't know. Couldn't tell you. Oh man. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of in a hurry right now. What, what's this about? Well, Bryson, uh, like I said, I'm really trying to help out our buyers. The last time we had a listing here, it sold and we ended up with about three buyers in the area and we can't find a home for them. Have you thought about possibly selling your home in the next few months? Uh, no, we don't really, we're not thinking about doing that. No. Any friends or family that you know that may be looking to sell as well? Because we do have buyers all throughout the LA area. Um, I mean, maybe, but why, why should I choose you? That's a great question, man. It probably takes longer than a minute since you're in a hurry. But if you are seriously interested, we could probably set up a meeting and I could stop by. We're, we're not too far from where you're at anyway. But look, let me do this so that we stay in touch. As soon as we hang up, I'm going to text you. This way we can stay connected. It sounds like you're in a hurry and I don't want to keep you from whatever you need to do. But if you do think of anybody, I'd be happy to help you out. Is that okay? Uh, um, yeah, sure. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. And last question. Uh, did you know interest rates are extremely low right now? They're in the probably high twos, which is insane. Have you guys thought about probably buying a, an investment property, whether it's here or maybe in another state? Um, I mean, yeah, interest rates are low, but houses are more expensive than I've seen in a long time. So I don't know if that's worth it right now. I'd probably wait. Yeah. In some areas, in some areas, which is crazy. You know, one of our, one of our clients ended up moving to Tennessee and bought a home that was five times less than what they had. Same square footage, bigger yard, which is nuts, right? Uh, so it, it just depends on, on what you want to do. You guys thinking of making a move next year? Uh, I mean, we probably couldn't afford to, to do that right now, to be honest. Oh, no? What's, um, what do you think is, is going to make it happen that that will make you want to move? Um, I mean, you got to find me a good deal, I guess. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's... You and everybody else I talk to, man, what does a good deal look like to you? I mean, you know, I, I don't want to go into details. We, I know how much I paid for this home, and I, I know how much I'd like to get out of it. So, all right, what uh, yeah. what would you say is is a dream price if you wanted to sell your home? It's like, hey, Tristan, if you if you sold it for this, I would consider selling. Uh, I mean, I, I would consider like maybe seven hundred fifty thousand. All right. And so you know that home prices right now in your area are probably a little bit less than that. But if I told you that there is a possibility of selling it at that price, would you seriously consider? Because I don't want to leave you without a home either. I mean, this is this is the first time we're talking, man. So I, I don't want to be like, hey, it's all Tristan's fault. He sold my home in three days. Yeah, I, I mean... I don't know. We, I have to talk to my wife about it, honestly. Makes sense, dude. Makes sense. I, I actually don't buy anything without my wife because as soon as I come home with like a new video game or new shoes, I get in trouble. So it makes total sense <laughs> with the house. So let's do this. Uh, talk to your wife. I'll follow up with you later on today. I've got your cell. I'll text you. And then we could set up some time to talk tomorrow or meet up. You know, I'm going to be in your area. I only live 15 minutes away. Um, if I'm in your area, I'll stop by, say hello. At least we can talk to each other and you can meet me in person and you know how I look. How's that sound? Uh, I mean, like I said, I probably want to talk to, to the wife first before I make any plans. Awesome, man. Well, talk to your wife. 
and tell her hello. I don't know her, but if I'm in the area, I'm going to stop by and say hi. I'll text you before I show up. I'll be like, hey, man, what's up? Nice to meet you. And then I'll leave. But thanks for your time. Appreciate it, Bryson. Uh, look out for my text that we have my cell phone number and we'll connect later on. Okay. I'm, so you, you really think I can get 750? There's a way to do that. Yeah, man. With the market, with the market the way it is right now, um, you'd be surprised. Homes are selling for about three to five percent over their listed price if they're listed at the price they're supposed to sell. And it's it's going nuts. I mean, look, I'll, I'll give you an example. We we just put in an offer on a th this is crazy number, okay. $13.1 million home. You know, Matthew Perry from Friends. Well, we just put in an offer on his home and there were multiple offers on his home for $13 million. It's insanity. So when you're talking to me about 750,000, that's a lot of money, but can you imagine the multiple offers in a home that has your price point? I mean, that's, that's the reality we're living in right now in Los Angeles. So... Uh, if you've got some time man, talk to your wife tonight, we can meet tomorrow. But like I said, I'll text you so we can set up some time and then go from there. Is that good? Yeah, sounds good. All right, buddy. Thank you so much, man. I'll text you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. All right. So when the call is done, do I hang up or do, do we like visually shake hands or virtually shake hands? Yeah. So, um, if you want, I mean, it sounds like, I know you said this is your first time, but it sounds like you know what you're doing. So, well, um, Curtis, want, Curtis trained me. Okay. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, usually what I do is just go over, you know, just a few notes, things that I felt like went well. Or, Perfect. Uh, you know what? Work on. That would be or great. We could do another call. No, let's, let's go over things that I could improve on because it shows that, number one, you know what you're talking about. You're listening to me. And you're giving me feedback to make me a better caller, a better, a better real estate agent. So let's shoot for that. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I've, I've got a few notes down here. Cool. And uh, one of the things that I liked, and I'm, I'll go through, you know, the good and the bad real quick. But I like that when I said, why should I choose you? You didn't try to explain. And I find a lot of agents all of a sudden, as soon as I give them an objection and all they want to do is talk and uh that you know telling is not selling if you're talking too much they're just gonna lose interest so i like you went straight for the close um which was great um i think also you did mention um the investment side of things and you kind of assumed that i was ready to invest in property um which i i liked as well um when I said I'm going to talk to my wife, he made a little joke you know, about uh, buy a video game that breaks the ice a little bit, which which was awesome. Um, I think one of the things, and you you kind of did this, but one of the things I would do is give them two options that are pretty concrete when you're going for the close. And I think that would really be the only piece of advice I'd give you is rather than saying, "Hey, I can come by tomorrow or today," say, "Hey, I could come by either today at four or tomorrow at five, I'm actually going to be in your area both those times, which works best. And that way, I, it's not a yes or no question. Um, like now that. with the geo lead, obviously, yeah, it's a little different than calling an expired or a FISBO. So um, sometimes you just aren't going to do that. Great, that, that great feedback, I man. I love it. You're hired as my new coach. I just fired Curtis. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Bryson. I appreciate you, man. That was very, very invaluable. I love that. Well, good. And if you want, we could do another practice run, um, or I can just send you to our, our survey and you can actually get a recording of this call if you want. You know what? That'd be awesome. I'd love a recording of the call. Awesome. Well, I'll go ahead and transfer you over. And thanks so much for calling, Tristan. Dude, I love you guys. Good job on Red X, man. Awesome. We love you. So keep it up. Good luck prospecting out there. Thanks, bro. See ya. Bye. Is there a survey after? So I would fill out the survey, right? Fill out Can the survey and then a little ask it. It'll, 
Can you can you just tell Bryson that he killed it? He did an yep. amazing job. All right. I'll, I'll let him know. And then and then what what it will say is it'll say press one or whatever it is to um, text you a recording of of the call. And so then you put in your phone number and it would text you just the recording of the call that you just did. And that way people can give that to their broker or an accountability partner or a coach or trainer to listen to how they did. We have a lot of people that will listen to the, their own calls to critique themselves. But the whole idea is that confidence and fear of rejection and fear of calling and call reluctance really comes down to confidence in what do you say. And if people are confident in what they're going to say, like Kent, I would imagine that, that there's, there's no new objections that you hear really, <laughs> right? I mean, you've heard them all. I mean, how many, you've, how many calls have you made in two years? A billion. Hundreds of yeah. thousands. Yeah. I mean, a lot. So, um, but you know what to say because you practice and you've done it so many times you can do it in your sleep. So, so there's no fear of no matter what somebody says, there's no fear. And so I will say if, this, you, you get the only time you really get new objections is the more confident you get because you go deeper into your scripts, which ask different questions, which bring up different objections. That's interesting. That's, a, that's very true, man, because you're going deeper. The, the better you get at scripting and it becomes more internal, you know what to say, so it becomes your dialogue, uh, the deeper you ask questions in, and then all of a sudden it's like, you're having a conversation with somebody you don't know and it's a real conversation. And so I have, that's, that's I one have of the five coins. And if I don't, oops, and I move my five coins, if I don't ask five questions or close five times, I have to do 10 push-ups. <laughs> ah, I like that. You should make yeah. like 100 push-ups. Yeah, probably when I get in a little better shape, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're funny, dude. <laughs> you're yeah, funny. that's pretty so, good. So that number that I called, uh, is is for all the Red X users. So this, I can't give it out. I don't know if everybody here is on Red X, but once you join Red X, you are able to call that number to practice daily. I mean, how often, how often do you see some people using this, Curtis? I, it depends. I, I mean, kind of, kind of the best story I have is we have somebody who called in and ended up calling in every day for, for three weeks before before she felt confident enough to actually prospect to live people. But, but by the time she did, she did really well, you know, prospecting to live people. And, and so I, that, that's maybe on the more extreme side. We have a few people that try it kind of as a novelty and don't really utilize it as a resource, which they should. Um, but, but there's no restrictions by any means. So people, the more they wanted to call in and practice, the, the better. Um, I, 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 think, I think the best part about it is that recording that you have afterwards and you should give that to another agent in your marketplace or a broker or a mentor or a coach or a trainer. Um, we, all of our people are amazing and they're, they're trained. Uh, but but like, like, like Bryson went through um, he's not a coach or trainer, so he's going to give you feedback based on some opinion about how he feels the call goes based on his experience in role playing. But, but really taking that recording and using that and giving it to a coach or trainer or broker that that's going to help you get better is takes that role playing to the, to the next level. Dude, I think so, that's key. Kent, did you ever use that? The, uh, the, the role play? play? Yeah. The role play number. Did you ever use that at the beginning? At the beginning I did, and then I got role play partners and accountability groups. Dude, I've been I've been in role play partnerships and some accountability groups. I gotta say, Bryson did a freaking good job, dude. I don't yeah. think some of my some of my role play partners sucked in comparison to Bryson. Well, so they're trained, they're trained when you when you say one, two, or three level of difficulty. Um, I'm giving everybody the secrets here, is is all that means is how many objections they're required to give you before they allow you to get the appointment. We, when you role play, you should never role play to a failure, right? A football team doesn't practice to lose. 
you, you practice to win. So every role play you do should result in an appointment at some point. Um, that's the whole point. You're also teaching your subconscious that, that you're going to end all of these objections that are getting thrown out are going to result in, in the appointment. So, so the more difficult you say, if he, if you would have said easy, he would have, he would have given you the appointment the first time you said, Hey, w- let's, you know, I'll be in the area. Let me stop by. You would have been like, okay, that sounds good. But you pick difficult. So he's, as, as the role play person, he's required to throw out a certain number of objections before he's allowed to give you the appointment. Got it. Dude, that's, that's pretty sweet. I really love that. I'm going to have my whole team do this. So, you know, that's great. That's great. This is, this is perfect for my whole team. We all know role play partners are flaky. So yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> if they don't show up at that time where you're role playing, pick up the phone and call the Red X number. Savannah says, "Can we have a Black Friday price in order before tomorrow?" <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about Black Friday. Oh, uh, Savannah, Is there sales on Black Friday? Good question, Savannah. Good question. <laughs> good job on trying to sneak it in there. <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. Uh, so here's what I wanted to show to to the people that are on here. Let me grab it first. There it is. Okay, scrolling up, almost there, guys. There it is. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. I have a script book that I created for the team from just calling since 2003. I've compiled everything. It's it's quite a few pages. I haven't fixed it since 2019, um, but I mean, once you're into a script, you don't really tweak it that much. Here's a table of contents of what we have right? Just expired, old expired, online leads, FISBOs, past clients, circle prospecting, which is the one I just did, uh, door knocking, open houses, and, and a whole bunch of texts, like massive amounts of texts, because I text a lot. And so you can see here, new expireds. Let's scroll down to circle prospecting, which is the geo leads that Kent was calling. I just call it circle prospecting, different names, same thing, right? Uh, here we go. Right, so you can see uh, first name, yes, first name. I, I use Happy Realty because I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, great, how can I help you? I'm calling because I'm working with some buyers. But you can always tweak this, right? Uh, but it goes all the way. How many pages do I got? 47, 47 pages. And I'm going to send this over to Curtis, and he's going to share it with you so that you can take a look at it and use it and tweak it like you want, add what you want, take away what you want. Uh, just make sure when you get it, uh, create a copy of it because you can't edit the one I'm going to send you. So create a copy of it and then you can edit all you want on it. So uh, I, I, even before, even before we, we started broadcasting live, um, it, it came up, Oh, well, what scripts do you use? Um, and, and my philosophy is just pick one <laughs> and start using it. So we're going to have this amazing 47 pages of scripts just start using it and you're going to learn real quick what do you want what you want to tweak and and i think that you can't i i you can't wing it if you've never prospect you could and eventually you're going to get there but if you start from someone what someone else has already trialed and aired and then you internalize it and customize it to what you're doing then then you're going to do so much better on the phone and kent you're a you're a testament to this right i mean you you yeah. memorized scripts to the t i remember you were using mike ferry scripts and you it it was exactly what he what you could download from him but now when i listen to you you have all your own things that you throw in there your own closes your own um stuff and i was even thinking kent you should borrow tristan what he said about the whole investor thing that could be if you haven't gotten your five count coins it's like hey did you know interest rates are crazy you know if you thought about investing and i thought that was a great close tristan so um, i think the thing that i would add to that as well because it was it was amazing but if you ask them how long they've lived at the address and if they say more than two three years they have equity yeah a really good point kent especially yeah that's that's a good, good point very very good point so question for you guys um when well this is for curtis and then i have a question for you ken curtis 
when we're done here, I've already, I just emailed you the, the copy. Great. So we're also going to email you the reg, the people that registered to watch this. Okay. Yep. This way you guys can email whatever discount or whatever you want to Red X along with the link to, to the scripts. Uh, I just sent that over to you. So everyone listening, I'll get that. And then can I have a question for you, buddy. When are you just dialing the circle prospecting or the geo leads or who else are you dialing on a daily or weekly basis? Yeah. So I, I kind of do all of Red X's lead stack expired, Fizbo's, Rempa owners, geo leads, really focused in on geo leads right now. Um, just because it has a high pickup rate. I mean, I called seven numbers and talked to three people. That's true. That's so true. Very true. It's, it's less of a conversion rate, definitely. Um, less people that are wanting to do something right now, but you have ample opportunities to, to talk to people. Same with for rent by owners. For rent by owners might not be a good seller lead necessarily, but they're a great buyer's lead. I mean, they're great seller's leads as well, but man, you can, that's the thing I like about for rent by owners is now we're not looking to sell, totally get it. When do you plan on adding to your portfolio? I love yeah, that. So for rent by owners are, are vacant rental properties, not managed by a property management company. So, so there's really a whole bunch of opportunities there that, you know, either they want to sell cause there's equity, they want to find renters um, or they, you know, or they want a property management company to help them. And you could refer that out or if your brokerage does that, or they're an investor and they want to buy more properties. So those, a, dude, a couple of questions here, two different people, Savannah, what's up Savannah again. I love that you're participating so much. She's asking, can you order multiple farms for $49 per farm or how does that work? Yeah. So for $49 a month, you get 2000 rooftop. So we'll look up the information on, on 2000. It's only $99. We'll do 5,000 plus you get email addresses on all those rooftops as well. Wow. For the geo leads. Yep. I love that dude. Thank you. All right. Greg Lennon and e either of you can, can answer this one, but he says, what research, if any, do you recommend doing before cold calling? Should we have property, sales background, owner versus renters, social media profiles, et cetera? Anything? Um, I mean, the more research you do, it doesn't make the call any less cold. So I just say you make the call, <laughs> in my opinion. It, and you saw, even if you get wrong numbers, so there are some LLCs that I run into, which I'll call a Mr. or Mrs., depending yeah. on... You know, if there's only one name on there and it's a man's name, I'll call it Mrs. Johnson, whatever. But I I don't do any research other than what Red X gives me, which is perfect. So, so but all of our leads, which is unique um, to our circle prospecting geo leads, is that all of our leads are, we're looking for the homeowner of the property, not the tenant. Um, and, and as we saw with one of the people can't connect it with today, that's not always perfect. But if it's a non-owner occupied property, we're going we're through the tax records and research. We're trying to find out where the owner does live and find a phone number for the homeowner there. So the owner versus renter thing that you asked about, that's kind of taken care of just in, in, in that. But we also have filters too, where you could filter out absentee owners if you were specifically calling within a neighborhood and didn't want to call it an owner that lives somewhere else. Um, so we have a lot of filters in the data to narrow it down to the list that you would want to call. I love that. And I would say, don't overthink it. Same thing as Kent. Just the more you, the more you, the more you think you're going to have to do in order to call, the harder it's going to get. And so just pick up the phone, call that secret number, Call the bat number, practice, 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 practice. So when you show up and it's game time, you do an amazing job instead of so, just crashing and burning. One thing I would recommend, and this is more for newer, and it could even be for people that are struggling to get on the phone. As weird as it sounds, I created an alter ego when I got on the phone. Ooh, I like that. So have you guys ever heard of Sasha Fierce? 
You no. Ever heard of her? No, no. Tell me. So Sasha Fierce is Beyonce's stage name, her alter ego. Oh, that's right. Okay, cool. So, and Black Mamba is Kobe Bryant for all you yeah. California people. True. So as weird as it sounds, create that alter ego and just say, I'm not Kent when I'm calling, I'm this person. And oh. mentally it will click, you'll get more confidence. Um, David Goggins is a big, I love David Goggins. And that's kind of where I got it from. He's Goggins when he's a Navy SEAL and David Goggins when he's a pedestrian. So just let, if, if you're struggling becoming a bad A, create that alter ego that's a bad A. That's a really good one, dude. I love that. It brought me back and then I'll wrap up with this and then you guys can have whatever you want. Uh, when I was, so I was a cold caller. I was, I was a dialer in my, in high school and college. I used to just call, call, sold ink cartridges, windows, everything. And one time I was, I was bored to death selling windows on the phone. I was, I think I was 16 and I put on a Scottish accent and I was talking to this Scottish lady. That's why I put it on. And we were going all out. She was telling me all these stories and I learned a lot about Scotland. All I had was an accent hung up. Done. It felt so good. I was like, that's kind of cool. I never tried that before. And then my supervisor comes in and says, hey, uh, we'd like to talk to you. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, oh, crap, I'm fired. <laughs> this is terrible. So I go in and he says, hey, you did a great job on that last call. Um, have you ever thought about going door to door and selling windows? And I was like, oh, no, I'm only 16. I don't want to do that. But anyways, the story, you reminded me of that whole thing. Yeah, put on a Put on a different you, right? Whatever yeah. that looks like for you to come in and play hard. So that's awesome. I have, I have one quote. It's, it's on my little notes in my computer. I activated somebody I wanted to be, and I finally became that person, or he became me. But at some point in time, we met. Dude, that's pretty awesome. I love that. So create that alter ego. Activate that person you want to be. It and yeah, create a mission statement of when you sign up for Red X today, say my mission statement with Red X is to create this life and don't stop until you hit it. Good one, Kent. I love that. I think we, we could end with there, Curtis. What do yeah, you think? Unless, unless we can hear your Scottish accent there. Tristan. Yeah, let's hear that. It's not that good. <laughs> it's been a long time since I tried it. <laughs> That's it. No. I used to practice it all the time as a kid after I did that. I was like, you know, I really love that one. <laughs> oh, guys, I love it. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Go to the Red X. Sign up. You'll get the secret bat number. You can call and practice. I'm going to have my whole team on it. Kent, we got to do like a part three, part four, part five. We should just make this a regular thing. Every, every few <laughs> webinars, we should just get Ken on and we'll call. Dude, so, I love this. We can, we can, everybody can call. Yeah. <laughs> thanks everybody right, thanks everybody Bye. we'll see ya